How's your recording with Mikhail Pletnev? I heard you listen to his CDs since you were very young, right? Yes. I also told him that about this, but um, the first time I heard him uh, was his uh, performance on the um, on the Rachmaninoff, mm -hmm. um, the theme of Paganini. Of course, I heard his other performance, but that one really stayed in my um, brain for such a long time. It was just so impressive because he's the kind that he's not so um, active. I mean, his body language is not so active, but you can hear such power in his music. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was able, when I know that I will be recording and even performing with him, I was just like, wow, it's, it's just like um, kind of unbelievable, unbelievable, because it, it's like your childhood um, dream become true mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, so, and also when I recorded with him, his own kind of music, um, that uh, his own interpretation really makes me wow every time. Um, because uh, I played the Tchaikovsky Concerto for many times after the competition, but his interpretation was something like fresh new mm -hmm. for me. Actually, it made a lot of sense because um, the way he developed the music, um, especially the first movement in the 2T section, where he used um, a s approach with a, s um, a slower tempo and then gradually you know, emerge into this huge um, symphonic thing. And, and later on with, with all those um, passages with the full orchestra, it's so passionate. So the, contract, the contrast is so effective, um, the way he does it. Mm -hmm. So it, it really gave me some fresh thoughts on this particular piece. So yeah, I really enjoyed um, and really I was really honored to play with him. Yeah. If you see the booklet, it first talks about a particular violin, right? Yes, the violin that I play on. It says uh, this violin was made in uh, 1732 by the Italian luthier master Gesù. Mm -hmm. right? The timbre of this violin is not only deep and powerful, but also sweet and resonant. Mm -hmm. It also says you performed with this violin on the National Day of Belgium. How was playing the violin? What was special about it? Well, I think, like I, like I said, the, the violin has a v very wide range of mm -hmm. uh, colors and, um, that w and also sound-wise. So you can actually do a lot of colors and really ex kind of play around with the, the sound on, on such um, you know, fantastic instrument. There can be a lot of wide range of different um, quality to your sound. Um, that's kind of sometimes it could be limited if the violin is not like like that. So uh, with this instrument, it's very comfortable and it has a like all the Guarneri del Jesus. It has a very powerful um, low register, mm -hmm. and then uh, but especially for this instrument, the high register is also a very singing and very nice, very warm sound. So I like this instrument um, very much. Thank yes. you. And you were 20 when you won the competition. Now you are... 24. 24. Yes. Do you feel like you are the same from then? Or what has changed since? I think definitely because, you know, when you're in competition, mm -hmm. mm, it's not so easy to be relaxed and, you know, be yourself. So mm, I definitely feel that there was it's kind of um, you're, you're kind of limited in in this small little box that when you do competition you kind of in that situation mm -hmm. so but afterwards I, I definitely feel um, more free and was um, much more into my performance and you know connect with the audience and and um, kind of um, make sure that I want to like there are my own interpretation in this in, in the music that I play. So compared to during the competition, it's definitely much more um, expressive uh, of myself. Like really enjoy my performances now compared to um, the competition because back then it was, maybe it's under the pressure or I don't know, but it was definitely um, less interesting i would say were there any difficulties when you were studying in curtis institute weren't you ever homesick because my father came mm -hmm. with me so it wasn't as bad 
um, the difficulty was definitely the language. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody arrives from their country, which they were really of the top, or mm -hmm. the very good ones from their country. But then they came to this school, really prestigious school, and you know now you see like uh, like you're not the best anymore. Like there's so many people that's much better than yeah. you, and then you know it just at first it kind of. It kind of gets frustrating when, well, like you're, I'm one of the worst, <laughs> and then and then now you and you gradually try to um, work, you, know, you just work hard and try to um, be better and better and really always urge yourself mm -hmm. to to practice and you know to to pl um, play together. Sometimes you in chamber music, sometimes in orchestra. Um, then everything gets better. I think it's definitely a place that. Um, made a huge um, difference for me in terms of musical perspective and, um, and, and everything else as well. So I know that you have visited Korea quite often. Mm -hmm. So in 2011, you won the Lee Sang Yoon competition in Tongyang. Last year, you came to Korea to perform and now you are here again. Mm -hmm. How is it like to perform in South Korea? I mean, like audience or uh, concert hall condition? Mm -hmm. I think it's it's really a great experience. I, I find that um, the Korean audience, um, not just they are very enthusiastic, mm -hmm. um, they also have really great ears. They can tell good performance mm -hmm. and bad performance. Like sometimes in some places, no matter how you play, okay, they, people just applaud you and like great, you know, uh, great performance but here you can tell the difference of um, if you played well or not so well or badly the, the audience definitely give you a different responses mm -hmm. so I find it very um, challenging but at the same time very fun you know to, to play here so uh, it's it's always a mm, pleasure to, to play in Korea what do you do uh, when you visit Korea Definitely eat a lot, eat like a lot. I said before. Yeah, food at first, in the first few years, at that time, I did not know so many different kinds of mm -hmm. Korean um, dishes. So at that time, my favorite was kaibi, and <laughs> now it's still one of my favorite. But you know, definitely now I love um, a lot more things. Kaibi is your ex, then? Well, now? it's still I still I still I still very much enjoy eating kaibi, but um, I don't know, like. Hmm. It's like <laughs> ma so many. There's so many. Um, Do you like spicy one? Spicy one, sure. Dakjibokum. 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 Yeah, yeah. It's like wow. It's so so good. Also, like those the the soups mm -hmm. dishes. It's just amazing. Mm. Uh, yeah. Jige. Yeah. As an artist, you must have had to travel in so many countries, right? Mm -hmm. Do you like traveling around, or you're just Hotel guy. It depends. Mm. I think <laughs> when I'm uh, when I'm before performing mm -hmm. or a big performance, usually I'm hotel. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the performance, then I would um, feeling to go out mm -hmm. and just enjoy. But it also depends because sometimes you don't get to stay that many extra days. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as a soloist, I, I definitely mm, enjoy playing in different places. But traveling is always kind of not my favorite thing, especially, uh -huh. you know, on the airplane or you have to wait for things and on car, it's just not, not the yeah, favorite thing. Tired. But it's definitely fun to, mm -hmm. to you know, besides those, everything else is mm -hmm. pretty, pretty nice. So do you have a raw model? In violin, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. But I want to say, I don't know why, but I want to say Roger Federer. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I, I love watching tennis. <laughs> um, but he is definitely like, Wow, like, the raw model, right? I mean, the way he, like yeah. the, the elegance uh -huh. that he plays, the fact that he can still play at mm -hmm. this age is just amazing. I mean, most of the tennis players would be retired by yeah, right. by his age. Yeah, and he's my favorite um, athlete of all time. What do you want to do in the near future? Do you have a piece that you want to try or play, recording? Mm. There are a lot of things that definitely I want to to do a um, piece uh, like definitely want to do the three sonatas by Brahms that's one of the most iconic repertoire for violin 
and piano. Also, like for example, like Isai sol solo sonatas. Um, it's one of the most challenging, but yet really charming works as well. And some people may find it kind of distant and kind of abstract, but I think it's um, really good music and should be definitely heard more, especially some of the like number one or number five, which is not so that not that often played. And there are many more it, it, there. I can go on and on, but that's like probably good enough for the next year or so. As a violinist, you're pretty fortunate, not as much as pianist, mm -hmm. but you get like three times more repertoire. But um, compared to cellists or violists, we're, we're very lucky to have this much repertoire. So what is your next plan or schedule? In September, there will be a tour with the Hong Kong Symphony Atta. We will be touring in Asia, in Hong Kong, Japan, and, and Taiwan. Next week, um, my website will be, uh, will be on, so you can follow my uh, concerts through my website. And there will be other interesting things on the website as well. So thank you and stay in tuned. Okay, thank you for your time. Thank you, thanks so much. Thanks so much.